Now, we started from the beginning, if you remember, we were, I was talking about how do you ask the Lord? How do you ask the Father? Right? I want to go through a few things in the Word, and then I want to show you a few things practically, practical things, and see how it works. Uh, most assuredly, I say to you, this is Jesus speaking, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Now, I read that verse hundreds of times. Do you know how many times I asked the Father and he didn't give me? Did you ask the Father and didn't give you? Ever. It happened to me hundreds of times, not just a couple of times. Yes, it happened that I got stuff, sure, but hundreds of times I didn't get it. Now, either Jesus is lying or I don't see the whole picture. He will give you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Man, I asked in his name so many times. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Okay. Now let's see a few spiritual laws about this. Ask according to the spiritual laws or to the promises. This is what uh, John says. Now this is the confidence. Confidence means I am sure, 100%, that we have the confidence we have in Him that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Now hearing is not like I hear your voice. Oh, you're too loud. No, just go quieter. It's not, it's not hearing like sound waves. Hearing is the court. This is a court when, when the judge hears someone, you, now when you go to the court, you don't go with your, your neighbor, right? You have an issue, let's say. And you go to the court, I hate this idiot. And that guy's like, you're stupid. Do you think the judge will hear you? The judge that doesn't even take your case into consideration. Why? Because you don't go to court based on your feelings. That's not how it works. You go to court based on the law. You want the judge to hear you, you got to bring the law. According to law 19 that says that I have the right of my property, alignment A, sub-alignment B, C, this neighbor of mine, he stepped over my property on Thursday at 3 p.m. It was trespassing, according to the law. And the judge is like, okay, I see. What do you have to say? He's asking the neighbor. Then I have a case. Why? Because I go according to the law. If I don't go to the court according to the law, he's not even going to hear my case. Well, he's my father. Yeah, but that's not how it works. That's not how it works. In your household, you are the parent and you have kids. There are protocols in the household. The kids are not doing whatever they want to whenever they want to. That's not how it works in the household. No, you don't really love your kids. No, you love your kids so much that you don't permit them to do whatever, whenever. Because you love them so much. You want them to grow straight and grow up straight and think right. So this is how it works here as well. When you go to the Father, but I'm a son, everything is permitted. No, if you don't know what the law says, what the spiritual law says, don't even dare. You're just wasting your time and you get more and more bitter. The, the God is not listening to you. This is how it works. And we know that He hears us, whatever we ask. We know that we have the petitions that we ask or desire of Him. Why? Because we go according to His will. James, you lost and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war. And you do not have because you do not ask. Okay? You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. Okay, so he's giving me another spiritual law. What is he saying? Well, that you may spend it in your pleasures. So if I ask something to spend it in my pleasures, I ask a miss, that means I'm not going to receive an answer. Okay, so this, is, this fits in the same, the same according to his will. His will is not for your own pleasures. Now, he, doesn't, he wants your desires. Absolutely, he put the desires in your heart. Pleasures means lust. That's totally different. I want a big house. Okay, the Lord doesn't have a problem with a big house. 40,000 square feet house, whatever. 100,000 square feet house. He doesn't have a problem with it. 
What's his problem? I want this house so I can prove whatever to my neighbors. Oh, that's lust. You ask him, miss, you're not going to get schmipped. You check your heart. Why do you want a big house? I want, I want a blessing for my family. I want to be a blessing for the body of Christ with a big house. Oh, that's legit. The Lord wants you to be blessed, to be a blessing for the body of Christ. Absolutely. How big do you want the house? 50,000 square feet. Done. I want just a thousand square feet, but cute, because my stupid neighbor, eh, oh, that's a miss. That's asking a miss, even if it's a small thing. So these are spiritual laws. It's important to know them. You receive when you pray, even though it gets manifested on the physical realm later. When do you receive exactly when you pray? And Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Let me tell you how it works. Just trust my Father. Surely, I'm going to tell you a spiritual law. I say to you, whoever says, opens the mouth and commands to the mountain, to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, which to the natural mind is that's never going to happen. You see Mount Hood, you speak to Mount Hood, Go into the, go to the ocean. That's, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt. Okay, so I have, okay, so I'm not praying to God. I just have to speak to the mountain and I don't have to doubt in my heart. But I have to believe that the, those things the Father says, no, those things I say will be done. So I have to believe that what my mouth is speaking will be done yeah that's how the law the law works those things he says will be done and he will have whatever he says people don't even believe what they say most of the time they don't believe what they say oh, i'll be there at five but i know i'm gonna be late because i have a meeting before but i'm telling i'm telling the guy i'll be there at five do i believe my words oh heck no it doesn't say believe the words that he said to the mountain. He says, believe those things that he always says. Whatever I always speak, I have to start believing that when I go to the mountain, it moves. That's why when the Lord showed me this, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm so off. So much percentage of what I'm saying with my mouth, I don't even believe. He said, I got to work on this because I'm off. No wonder when I speak over a, a problematic situation or for someone who's sick it doesn't happen <laughs> no wonder well that's why jesus didn't play with the words every time he spoke he opened his mouth he has something really conscious to say really focused on what he said okay therefore i say to you therefore what therefore whatever he explained how the law works i say to you whatever thing whatever things you ask when uh, you pray, believe that you receive them. When? When you pray. You don't receive them later. You receive them when you pray. And will, that's future, will physically have them. So when do you receive? Exactly when you pray. When you spoke over the thing, you got it right then. It's in the spiritual realm, it's yours. Now it takes a while until it physically comes. Because will means future tense. And receive them means present tense. When you pray, that's when you received. Okay, now sow a seed. This is part of it. You sow a seed. But the type of seed depends on what you're asking. If you're asking for something physical, you sow money or something physical. If you're asking for something that's spiritual, that's a different law. It depends on what you are asking. The seeds are different. Let's look at some types of seed. I know this uh, verse might be... Why is this here? Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. So what is, what is, what is Abraham saying here? You didn't give me a seed. I have nothing to start with. This is what he's saying actually. You did not give me a seed. I have nothing to start from. I put this verse here so you see everything starts from a seed, right? 
Now, Jesus explains, the sower sows the word. Okay, so the word is the seed. For some situations, you don't need a seed, a physical seed, money or time. You need what's the promise I'm starting from. What's the promise? What's the seed I received from the Lord so I can stand on, so I can start the process? For Abraham, is like, I'm going to give you a son. You're going to be the father of many nations. Oh, he started on that one. Oh, now I see. Okay. He thought it's a physical seed, but then when he received it, oh, the seed is why you said. Okay. So I stand on why you say, not the fact that she gets pregnant. Okay, that's later. Oh, so the seed is your word. Okay. By which you have given, uh, uh, have been given to us, this is Second Peter, exceedingly great and precious promises. You find your seed, depending on what you're asking, find your seed. Or ask the Lord, what's my seed? Where do I start from? <clears throat> do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. What I'm saying is every seed goes according to its own kind. So you have to sow a seed depending on the situation. I'm going to, go, uh, I'm going to show you um, practical examples and you'll see what I mean. Another spiritual law that has to do with this. Now, what I'm saying, I'm going to make a parenthesis. I'm going to, it's a lot of stuff I'm giving here, but you can go online and go over them. I have to rush because this is a crash course. I don't have time to spend like four sessions on it. It's a crash course, so you have to go over Everything will make sense in the end, you'll see. Another spiritual law. Get in agreement with someone about what you ask the Father for. Why is this important? Because of this, which is another spiritual law. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. So when you ask the Father, you better get in agreement with someone. It's a spiritual law. You want 100% results, you better get in agreement with someone. We're going to get to that later. When you ask, you don't constantly ask, keep asking. That's not how it works. You only ask once, once. And then you only thank God for it. That's it. Constantly thank the Father. You ask only once, and then you, ask, you thank the Father. You don't ask every single day, because Jesus says this. I didn't put the verse. Don't be like the Gentiles, who think that just, they just repeat the asking over and over, they are going to be heard. No, that's not how the spiritual law works. This is what Jesus said. That's not how it works. You ask once. And you, I'll show you more and more things, what to do when it feels like it's not working. But you just thank the Father. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer with supplication, which is petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. What is he saying? Well, if I come to you and I say, you know what? Be anxious for nothing. You're like, sure, just because you say it, I'm not going to be anxious for nothing. It's not going to work. If I go to someone who's really anxious and I say, be anxious for nothing. I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> it's easy for you. You don't go through what I'm going through. Of course you're not anxious. But what is the word saying? Let me give you the solution for anxiety. In everything, what? Everything that makes you anxious. By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, you let your requests be made known to God. And then, only then, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. I just want this peace of God to come over me. No, nothing happens just like a seizure. Prosperity doesn't happen like a seizure. Perfect health doesn't happen like a seizure. Everything in the kingdom of God is premeditated according to a law, and you go against it and you get it. That's exactly how it works. Now, I'm going to make a parenthesis. Don't get mad. Just bear with me. Okay. Okay. 
when we are in religion, when we were in religion, the pendulum of the pendulum of the clock is right here. Right here means it's on your efforts. You have to be in good standing with God. You have to do everything right for the God to receive you, to even listen to what you're saying, to even look at you and not get mad. It's like pendulum is right here. Now we come into sonship and we understand that's really just thinking. We are right. We have all the promises because Jesus paid, not because I paid. Everything is done by faith. Everything is done by grace. And the pendulum automatically goes like right here. You know what, what, what it says here? You can do whatever. You got them all. You don't have to do anything because you are born of God. Everything is yours by default. It's all about relationship. Just bear with me. It's all about relationship. You don't have, you don't have anything to do. In religion, oh no. Ho, 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 ho. God is mad. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, you have to earn everything you, you get. Here, it's all about relationship. You don't have to do anything. Both of them are deception. Absolutely deception. You and your kids, it's all about relationship. Do you have any rules in your house? Oh, so it's not all about relationship. Okay. How's that, how, does, how does that even work? Well, it is relationship, absolutely. You are a son of God. You have a relationship with your father. But the father has spiritual laws, has protocols in the kingdom. He's the father of order. Things come into place by order, not just whatever. You don't like your kid, the, the older one, get the fork and go into the younger one and scrape his skin away, do you? No, you're a God of order. Oh, whoa, 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 we have a good relationship, but no, uh-uh. Uh-uh. We talked, if you remember last time, we talked about the, you don't walk into authority unless you were under authority. Those are spiritual laws. I'm a son, just whatever. No, it's not whatever. We have a relationship here, but there is order in the house. Now, I understand here in religion, it's only order without relationship. Here, it's all relationship without order. But we are called to go on the, in the middle of the righteous paths. Walk in the middle of the righteous paths. That's how it works. Now, if you disregard the order, you are deceived. If you disregard the relationship, you are deceived. It's both. It's absolutely both. <clears throat> Thanksgiving, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into, there are so many words, so, so many verses about thanksgiving. I just put this one. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy endures, is everlasting. His truth endures to all generations. What is he saying? It's not changing. It's not changing. And you'll see why. Now, this is another one. People don't do it. Why? Because they memorize it. I know it right here. I'll prove to you, you don't know it right here. How many people in Celebration City has, have sown seed throughout these years being here? Do you have an account on how much seed you've sown? With dates and times and how much, when, to whom? Do you have an account? No. And that's okay. That's totally not okay. That's totally not okay. Imagine that I'm a farmer, right? I'm a farmer. This is my land. Hundreds of acres, right? And I have seed. I'm, I don't even know what kind of seed I have. Is it corn? Is it grain? Is it tomatoes? And I do this. It's field, it's good field, it's good seed. Okay, and I come uh, two weeks later to you, so what kind of seed did you sow? It was some good seed. Okay. Where? Somewhere, I'm sure. 
What do you expect? A hundredfold of what? Of what? A thousandfold. <laughs> That's not how it works. There's no thousandfold in the Bible. We speak those words. There are no spiritual laws about that. There was 30, 60, 100. And Jesus says, if you put it in the right ground, it's just a hundredfold. That means a hundred times. Someone is counting. Oh, I've sown so much seed. I don't know where it's at. I don't know if this works. You don't even have a track. You don't even know what, when, to whom, and what for. How do you know when to expect the harvest? Was it tomatoes? Because that's three months. Is it three months, honey? I don't know. <laughs> Was it grain? Because that's nine months. Was it grapes? Was it apples? What? When do you expect if you don't know what and where and how much? You understand what I'm saying? Imagine this. The father, he's the farmer. He's, he's the husbandman, as King James says it. He, says all, he has all this ground, right? And he goes to his employee. An employee tenders to a tree. And it, he tells the farmer, the husbandman, having billions, billions, billions of trees, you cannot even count to one billion. You get old. You cannot even count to one billion. He has billions of trees. He comes to this specific tree and he says, it's been three years. Someone was counting. Someone was counting every year if there was something in that tree or not. It's been three years. And you know what? The employee says, you're right. Just give me one more year. Let me work on it. And the father's like, if it doesn't produce fruit, take it away because I need this piece of land. He knew exactly how much the tree would take from his land. Someone is counting. Someone is taking notes. He's teaching us to take notes. I want you to see this. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. It doesn't say memorize the vision. Because people forget from here to here. It says what? Write it. Write the vision and make it what? A new car. Is that plain? I'm asking, is that plain? A new car, I can, I can give you a piece of crap. That's new. You don't even want to look at it. Is that what you meant? What's a new car to you? How many years old? What brand? What model? What color? What horsepowers? How much? That's making it plain. Plain is a new car. What's a new car to you? For some people, 15-year-old car is a new car. For you, what's your new with the definition of new? You've got to make it plain on paper. Make it plain on tablets. Well, it was an iPad or like Samsung tablets, but you understand what I'm saying is on paper. Whatever your tablet is. That he may run who reads it. In the beginning that he is you who wrote it down until you get the result. Later on is your kid whom you trained for years to trust the Lord. And then you show him, this is what I've done. I apply this spiritual law. This is how it works. And your kid is he. He sees it clearly. Oh, my dad wanted a white one, a Toyota. It's red. I know. Right? So your kids are he later. Your people whom you are training are he later. But it's got to be on paper very clean. This is another spiritual law. It might take a while from your asking the Father to its manifestation on the ground. And this is a lot of where a lot of people, they are missing it. You got to do not back down. You do not give up. Some, some guy said it. From the amen to there it is, there is a gap. If you know that there is a gap, 
Stand and don't run. Stay there and wait. Stay there. I want to show you this in Habakkuk. Habakkuk? How do you say it? Habakkuk 2.3. This is a... It bugged my mind for many years, this, this verse. The vision is yet for an appointed time. Okay. But at the end, it will speak and it will not lie. Okay. Though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come and it will not tarry. Now, another translation we had in Romanian, it doesn't say it is yet for an appointed time. It is it's saying it is for an appointed time. It says it's set in stone. That's what it says. It's set in stone. The translation was wrong. So it, but it's not what it says. It doesn't say... It says, you, let's say you ask the Father for something that you need by the, the end of this week. Right? Let's say. And you need it, and it's something that the pressure is big from whatever people or whatever company, and you have to pay a bill, whatever it is, right? And the pressure is on you, and it's like, Lord, I'm asking you for this, and you do whatever has to be done, and we'll go through it. And it doesn't come. Oh, man. What is the Lord saying? Even if it tarries, even if it delays, you do not move. You wait for it because it will surely come. It will not lie to you. It will not lie to you. Even if it delays. Now, this verse helped me so much. Because so many times I'm like, oh man, I missed it. It was my fault. I completely missed this. But it's like, no, even if it's late, Lord, I need grace. In times of need, when you miss it, you need grace. The grace is not for every day. For times of need. The Father doesn't want to train you to be in grace every single day. I know it's hard to hear. Grace is needed when you miss it. The Father trains you to always walk in His ways. Not to always be astray to need grace. The grace is for times of need. Now, if I'm stubborn and a dumb idiot, and I keep hold on to my ideas, that grace is not even for me. Because he's opposing the prideful ones. He doesn't give grace to the pride. Hello? That's why I have to be malleable. Parenthesis, this is, this is so important. I know I said this quite a few times. I have not, never, I'm 42 years old, thank you. I have never, never, ever saw one person who held, who stood on a promise of God and failed. Never, ever in my life. You know what I saw? Most of them, they started with the word, like so strong, I'm going to keep going. Things delayed, and they gave up. And then they messed it up, and everything was a fail. And everybody, what happened? Because he was such a man of faith. You got to see all the details. Because Jesus says, I'm not going to, nobody's going to be put to shame who stands on what I'm saying. Now, let me give you this. You hold on to the scripture, to the word, to the promise, but your thing is really messed up. But the fact that you hold on to it, you know what happens? The word is alive and working. The word starts cutting the crap out of you, shaping you. You hold on to the word, it, it, it cuts the crap out of you, literally. It burns whatever is not gold out of you. And then you get to the point where you get the spiritual laws right, and it just happens really quickly. But if you don't hold on to it, because it's not working to let it go, you're not going to get to that point. And you start the process again with another situation, and you let it go, and you end up your life here on the planet, and you're not even half work baked, like the Father worked, wanted you. Behold, the proud, <laughs> his soul is not upright in him, but the just, this is where the famous verse lays in Habakkuk, after the, the it says, if he tarries, just wait. This is where the famous word is in the scripture. But the just shall live by faith. 
What? Yeah, it's right here. The next verse. It's not randomly placed in the Bible. It tells you exactly how it works. It tarries, it delays. Do not move. You, the Father, will keep him, the man, whoever takes the promise, in perfect peace. How? Well, if the man, my mind, is stayed on the Father. If my mind wanders around, the perfect peace is not there. Because he trusts you, the man, I trust him. So he keeps me in perfect peace if my mind stays on him. Because I trust him. Trust is not a feeling. Staying on him is not a feeling. If you go by feeling, you never stay on the Father. 100% ever. Because to stay on the Father is to go by faith, which is totally against what you see. Because what you see moves all your emotions to not go with the Father. And you know exactly what I'm saying. If your mind, by a quality decision, stays on God, even though you look so dumb and looks really dumb to yourself, because every logical individual would not choose the Lord in this situation, but you stay with the Lord, it's dumb and you just stay with it. Because you make a choice to trust Him, He'll keep you in perfect peace. And then the solution will come, everything will be fine. Now, this is another one that's good, it's important to see. This helps a lot. Speak in tongues and talk to the living kingdom. Why? There is a trick here. I want you to see this. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to man, but to God. Also, the communication is with the Father. Okay. So no one understands him. What do you mean no one? No human being, no demon, no devil, nobody. So you talk to your father in tongues. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Okay, mysteries. Why do you need the mysteries? Because you need tactics. You need um, huh? instructions. You need solutions. You need strategies. Those are called mysteries. You speak in tongues to bring the solution for your problem. Oh, how many times. Man, I worked this, this Tuesday. I worked for one of my clients. I spent the time at his company. And I think I worked six hours. I was trying everything to fix a problem. I was going in circles. And I was like, man, what the heck am I doing here? I have the solutions. I just left the desk and I went through the company and just speaking in tongues. Thank you, Living Kingdom. I work with you. I spoke in tongues. When I got back to the desk, and it takes, I don't know, three and a half minutes to go around the whole company. Maybe four. When I got to my desk, I knew exactly what to do. I just did it in a few minutes. I was like, why didn't I do this in the first ten minutes? Six hours? Well, I got paid for the time, but you know what I'm saying. I wasted the guy's money. I even emailed, dude, I'm so sorry, man. I wasted your time because I, I just find the solution. It's like, Claude, you're good, bro. <laughs> you should see my other employees. <laughs> yeah. They are wasting weeks and months, not six hours. All right. I will give you the treasures of darkness. You know the darkness stole our treasures. The devil has stolen our stuff for 6,000 years. Everything the devil has is ours. It was stolen from us. It's in the darkness. You want to bring them back? I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. Those don't come just like that, like a seizure over me. I got to spend time in prayer in tongues and talking to the living kingdom so I get the right strategies, the right business ideas, the right things to connect my business and make it work. Another spiritual law, bind the devil and lose, lose the angels or release the angels. Assuredly, I say to you, Jesus speaking, whatever you bind on earth, where does it start? On earth. Don't wait for the Father to bind. 
You start right here with your mouth. You bind. It will be bound in heaven. What heaven? Well, the angels start moving from heaven for your sake. When you bind stuff here, they start band binding stuff for you. They don't move in your line. You start it and they align. That's how it works. Whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The angels go for the word of God. When you speak the word of God according to his will, according to the law, spiritual law, the angels are like, they don't move otherwise.